the type 2 5 alpha reductase enzyme and Dutasterat actually targets both type 1 and type 2. But this is also one of the major concerns I have when taking to Dutasterat for hair loss. What is up guys? Hope you're all doing very well. Today I want to be touching up a little bit on the topic of finasteride and dutasteride and what the difference is between them and what to choose for your hair loss protocol. So it has come to my attention that there are mainly two groups of 5 alpha reductase inhibitors users out there. That is the prescribed standard route of finasteride, usually prescribed by a doctor, a physician or a dermatologist or the nuke all go all the way in, that's the group that is using dutasteride. But it has also come to my attention and my concern that not all know the difference between finasteride and dutasteride, how they work, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So as usual, I'm not a doctor, this is not medical advice, this is purely for your entertainment and some education for some of you out there. You shouldn't do what I do, you should consult a physician about any kind of health concerns or whatever you will do before doing anything, because this is not medical advice. So at this point, if you've been following my content for some time, you should know about finasteride and testoide. Both work by inhibiting the 5-alpha reductase enzyme. It's a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, both of them, and they work by inhibiting the enzyme from converting your testosterone into a subcategory, namely dihydrotestosterone. Dihydrotestosterone has been linked in several studies to hair loss, male pattern baldness is also called, and we know that by inhibiting dihydrotestosterone from being formed, we are preventing or even reducing hair loss at some points. If you have been following my content for some time, you do well know about finasteride and testosteride, how they work by inhibiting the 5 alpha reductase enzyme, although there are some major differences in the medical purpose and the legal terms in which they have been used and will still be used for some time. And this is mainly what I want to discuss in this video. So as I just said, finasteride and dutasteride work by blocking your DHT from being formed in your body. Now DHT is a far more potent androgenic hormone than its parent hormone testosterone. And this is why it's important during prenatal development. From childhood to adolescence, DHT plays a major role in producing your male characteristics. This is also why male kids with hypogonadism can develop small micro weaners since you need androgenic response to develop your male genitals. So already here we can determine that DHT plays a very important role in our body and our development. This is also why I am a bit concerned in inhibiting the DHT and the 5 alpha reductase from being produced correctly. And I have a whole video series that I'm working on that's currently out there. And if you haven't seen them, you should check them out before making your choice if you haven't chosen any kind of prescription meds yet. So first off, only finasteride is an FDA-approved drug for hair loss. Even though studies have shown that dutasteride also is effective for combating hair loss, it has not yet, it has not yet been given its FDA approval. Dutasteride is approved by the FDA, but that is only for BPH. BPH, benign prostate hyperplasia, which is an enlargement of the prostate. This occurs for the same reasons that why we have hair loss, mainly from androgen activity caused by DHT. Therefore, these treatments work in the same way. This is why dutasteride works for hair loss, but why most of you guys also aren't able to get a prescription from your MD since it isn't FDA approved. Now here in Denmark, I'm not able to get to test right because since it is not FDA approved for hair loss, I'm not able to get that no matter what I tell my doctor. And no matter what we're going to write on the prescription, I will not be able to get it at any point. So although that finasteride is the only FDA approved drug we have, it has actually been proven that dutasteride can reduce up to 90% of DHT, while finasteride is capping around 70%. In one study published by the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology in 2014, a team of researchers compared finasteride to dutasteride in a study with 900 participants. The conclusion were very simple. 
While both groups had a significant recovery rate, the Tutastri group ended up getting more hairs in the end, and the hairs they had and got were even thicker than the finasteride group. Not only that, but another study in 2004, researchers found that finasteride had a half-life of 6 hours, while the testoid had a half-life of approximately 5 weeks. So of course this means that the testoid will actually stay in your body for way longer than finasteride, and that could also be a reason why it's far more effective in the long run. So another reason why the testoide might be stronger than finasteride, and why we can attribute the thicker and denser and more hair growth from the testoid, is that finasteride only targets the type 2 5-alpha reductase enzyme and dutasteride actually targets both type 1 and type 2. But this is also one of the major concerns I have when taking dutasteride for hair loss. I'm not a big advocate of the medical pharmacies industry, whatever you call it, and I won't try and get all political in here, but I won't say, but I will say that of course everyone out there is trying to get money of stuff and since Dutasteride has been shown to be more potent for hair loss and more effective, if it were me that were any kind of medical company out there and it was so easy to get it a FDA proof because, because it's so safe, of course I would seek for approval on the FDA and get the stamp. And from here I would just begin to produce Dutasteride and sell it as the number one most effective hair loss remedy out there. Of course, everyone wants to have the most effective drug out there for whatever you will buy. Because think about it this way. If you are able to get Dutasteride or Finasteride, and I will tell you that you will get more hair from Dutasteride and less hair with Finasteride, of course, like 90% of people would go with Dutasteride as the hair loss cure. Since there are no companies who have gotten the FDA approval for it yet or have applied or anything, I don't know what they're doing behind the scenes, there has to be some kind of reason that we normal people, so I say, doesn't know why they don't just seek for FDA approval on to test right and begin labeling that as the number one hair loss cure for men. So that is some food for thoughts and I'm not trying to say what is happening because I don't know. I just know if it were me having a great company, a pharmaceutical company, and if Dutasteride were just as safe as Finasteride, I would just take it to the FDA, get it approved and begin to sell that instead of Finasteride and being the only company apparently selling Dutasteride as a prescription med for hair loss. So lastly, this is some of the more boring stuff, but I want to address this as well before any one of you are going to decide whether to take Dutasteride or Finasteride for your hair loss. Some of the most common side effects for Finasteride is inability to maintain an erection, also known as erectile dysfunction. You're gonna have a decreased libido, that means you're gonna have a decreased sexual desire or wanting to have sex. And it is also seen to have some ejaculation problems when you are about to ejaculate and also some testicle problems with pains in the testicles and lastly we see some depression signs. Depression is also linked to what's called the post finasteride syndrome and this is a whole topic for itself and I won't go into that in here. So these are the most common side effects that we see when using finasteride. So of course testosterone has the same side effects as finasteride although it is not in the same weight as with finasteride. What really got to me was the following. During clinical trials, 1.8% of men on finasteride experienced reduced interest in sex. On dutasteride, it was 3%, almost two times the amount, and it is not two times the hair growth as we see. So we are going to double the risk of a side effect and not the growth of hair. Also, 1.3% on finasteride experienced erectile dysfunction, while it was a staggering 4.7% on tutasteride. So if you're worried about tutasteride or finasteride giving you erectile dysfunction, I can tell you for sure that studies show that you're going to have a way higher risk with tutasteride, and I think 5% is pushing the limit definitely to have sex just What's the point of having hair if you can't have sex, you know? So even though that the side effects are the same, the likelihood of you experiencing them will go up a lot if you choose the stronger compound. So there you have it, guys. 
Dutasteride is stronger than finasteride and studies have shown that dutasteride is the better compound if you just focus on the results. But if you focus on the side effect as experiences from people, you are going to... In so there you have it guys. Now you know that dutasteride is the stronger compound of these two. Also, if you take dutasteride, you're going to have to be very careful about the side effects since it has been shown through studies that dutasteride carries three times the side effect that finasteride carries. And that could also be a main concern for me personally. This is also why I'm not trying to get dutasteride in any way since the little kind of hair extra I would get doesn't seem to compare up to the side effects that I am taking a risk of getting. With that said guys, you know about the side effects, now you know about the benefits of them. You know it doesn't have the FDA approval and FDA approval is something that I regard highly when I can take finasteride that is FDA approved. There's a reason why it's not FDA approved, but I'll let that be completely up to you so you can decide for yourself with an educated decision from now on. And guys, if any one of you is using finasteride, dutasteride, using them both, I've tried them both. So if you have any kind of experiences you want to share with the other guys in here, you know the drill, comment below. Let us hear about your experiences. With that said, guys, until next time, cheers.